I'm so fascinated with the, the way you were talking about your preparation and being kind of obsessed with like watching everybody else and kind of adding those parts of the game. I know we talk about doing things like that and, and just that, that, that level of, of detail. Could you, you have your style of play of like being up on the line of scrimmage, rolling to the middle of the field, jumping over uh, the line of scrimmage, like doing all these like unique things and uh was there a time because i feel like when you're a player and you want to go make a play right coach coach will be in the film room like yeah you make the decision you better make a play or it wouldn't work out yep. like was there a, a time where you're studying these other guys and you're thinking okay ed reed just did this or this this guy just happened like i'm gonna start adding this wrinkle to my book oh, yeah. and then when that moment did happen you're like okay the leash of palomalo gets longer because like hey he's going out here and making these plays so oh yeah there's there's a Absolutely. A lot of things for Ed in particular that he would do that I'm like, oh, man, I need to incorporate that. And and funny thing is, that's what I would use scout team for, to be honest with you. I was like, oh, I want to, I want to do scout team. I want to do scout team because I'm like, oh, well, you know, I want to try some of the things I've seen some of these other safeties do. You know, one thing that, that I try to tell people about football is it's a it's it's a hard sport to get really good at in a sense because we spend our off season working out. So like the mentality is every off season, the only way that we can get better is to get bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah. You know, it's not get better at our skill development. So for me, I, I realized that man, in order for as this, for a safety to become better, I need to get more reps at practice. So I need to like see more. I need to just con continue to see it. So that's where, that's where I really started to change my practice habits. So like, get more reps on the field so that I could, I could see, um, see more. Um, I actually learned that from, from a book of the 10,000 hours book. I forget. But, outliers. Yeah. Outliers. Mm -hmm. And just talking about like that maximize that rep. So I was like, man, I need to maximize reps on the field. So whenever I'd go and do scout team, uh, that's where I was maximizing the reps. But then I would also incorporate the things that I saw on film. Like, Oh man, Ed, this guy's cover one this way to make it look like cover six. So he, baited that front side post that they wouldn't co throw in cover three, but in, they would throw in cover six. You know, like he would do these genius type things like, oh, man, and maybe, oh, they call cover one. Hey, let's make it look like six. And, you know, these sort of things that you could practice. Um, and Ryan would be out there or Chris Hope, you know, the, uh, the other safety would be out there. So we'd be, you know, practicing these guys together. The other thing was at Pittsburgh, the unique thing that I had in, as a role was, my rookie year, they made me play safety. They made me play safety, both safeties, which were two different positions at the time, and then both nickel and the dime, so and cornerback. So I was end up being like the, the the big safety on corner. So I literally played almost every position on defense, and then on, on sometimes on three man rushes, I'd be the fourth rusher. So I could run a, run a text. I can run an X game with some with with the with the DN. So you could literally say I played every position. What was really cool about that, it, what terrible about that was I had to learn them all, which was terrible because my whole rookie year I gave up, I, I promised I gave up a touchdown a game. And it was, I, I'm, I'm serious. What's funny about that is my second year, if any rookie would have come in and done that, I would have been like, get him out of the game. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. my standard had been crazy different. But anyway, um, when you look at an offense and then you see, hey, man, they, they attack you in this way, and I'm a safety, I'm like, I play every position. I know what everybody's doing. If I know the ball's going there, coach, I'm just going to switch with him. I'm going to say, all right, you know, linebacker, you play safety. I'm going to play linebacker because I know if, I, if, if you, you play it right, but I know the play. I'm gonna play. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. blow it up. Yeah. So for me, it was that's 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 kind of where I started to really develop. I just started seeing, man, I, I'm knowing everybody's role, and if I know that the ball is gonna go there, I'm just gonna switch positions with him. So you would do that in real time in the game. In real time in the game. This one, there wouldn't be a practice, and you'd be like, okay, I have a really good inkling I that this is gonna happen. I started getting smart enough to know that when I would do this in practice, the coaches would say, you can't do that. I'm like, all right, I'll just wait for the game to do that. So then during the games, I'm like, oh. But, you know, I'm not talking about – I'm also giving up blitzes. I'm also saying, hey, James, you'd be better in this this blitz than I am because I know you're going to get the running back. I won't, I'll won't. i get the running back too, but, you know. Yeah, you're James. So, like, the same thing. Like, the same thing, you know. Like, I know I'm going to get the tight end. Let's switch positions because I'll rush a D-gap. You rush, you rush contain because I'll get the tackle. You get the tight end. So, like, you know, these little nuances that you can make everybody better. Everybody doesn't think like, oh, well, why would you switch to blitz? Like, are you kidding me? James versus the tight end and me versus the tackle. Of course I'm going to lose. 
he's going to win 100 percent of the time. Yeah. So that that's that's what 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 started to make our defense really roll together, and what's started to hurt our defense late in my career is you get rookies out there. I'm like, hey man, you got curl the flat. He's like, what's curl the flat? Yeah. What? Give up a touchdown, yeah. Troy. You can't be doing that. I'm like, oh man. Do you remember the first play where that worked out, where you just kind of went out of the box and 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 took a shot? And it happened to work well to where it's like, okay. You know, it, it was more or less that happens in, like, coverage. Um, you know, uh, coaches would be yelling at me, hey, it's cover two, it's cover two, it's cover two, you should be in the half. And I'm showing cover three. But I'm telling the corner, hey, you got the half. I'm going to take the flat. So I'm showing cover three the whole time. And coach is yelling at the side, hey, hey, you got to be back, you got to be back. And I'm like trying to ignore him yeah, yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like you know I'll get to the sign like coach I just inverted with the corner I let him play the half mm -hmm. I played the, the, the you know I just want to give the quarterback a different look they've been calling this and cover three every time so those little things is, is what Coach LeBeau started to allow us. Like, yeah, man, here's the call. Make it right. You know what I mean? Like just giving us that level of flexibility in a lot of ways we we're talking about how Coach Tallman does too how long did it take for Coach LeBeau to be like, all right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, there's, I understand. There's, you're there's going to be a point where you're supposed to be in cover two, but you're showing cover three and you go to the sideline and it's like, you can't do that. <laughs> like, how many times did it work? How many times did it have to work before they were like, maybe he's on to something. Like, maybe, <laughs> like, like, let Troy listen, do I'm his a, thing. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a politician too. You know, like I, <laughs> I, I, I would tell him, you told me this though. If you tell me it's a hundred percent run, then I'm gonna play a hundred percent run. Like don't don't tell me it's gonna be something that it's not. And that's what I, I, I try to tell the players, like just don't study film to study film. You know, if Ed taught us anything, man, it's like you make plays studying film. Yeah. Believe what you see is what he would always say. I'm like, all right, I'll believe what I see. Um so all of these like anyway. Yeah. It's like for all the kids out there listening, make sure you understand your install <laughs> first, know what yeah. to do, know how to do it. Mm -hmm. But no, that is, it's just cool. Like hearing those stories. Like I remember I got to play with uh, Ryan Clark in his last year when he was in Washington and I was starting to come into the hull and get some play and everything else. And Ryan at practice, like he was somebody that was such a student of the game and uh, you'd be out of practice and you know how it is. It's like, you want to be a situational master and like it, whatever down in distance it was, you'd hear Ryan back there chirping, like how uh, pivotal was it? I'm sure that's what made your defense great everybody having that level of standard of kind of knowing every situation know how to talk about it before, as the huddle breaks mm -hmm. as the formations coming out yeah. uh emotion happening but uh how beneficial was it to have like a back end like that and somebody next uh, to you like ryan clark it's everything it's i mean it's absolutely everything and, and it may not be like that in every organization but it's absolutely everything to me and everything to our defense um because the level of trust and exposure that we would con consistently put each other in is um you know it takes a lot of co it takes a lot of like cohesiveness to do that i mean when we do some of this manipulation on the back end, you have to understand you're completely exposing somebody else. Oftentimes that was Ike, you know, mm -hmm. like, hey, Ike, we're doing this over here. Sorry, your man to man covers zero with their Chad Ochocinco or Brandon Marshall. Yeah, or, you know, yeah. what so we were always like we, we that was the only reason why we were allowed to do what we do is because, you know, Ryan's communicating Ike cornerback Brian McFadden their cover zero oftentimes where you know we want to do some cowboy type stuff um, but they held they hold their own they're the reason why we were you know as successful as we were